Sorry, I lost my mute button there for a minute. So <laughs> nice way to start our presentation this morning. Anyways, thank you everybody for coming today. As Emily mentioned, my name is Molly Kelgren and I'm the Health Science Education Product Manager here at Reality Works. I know how busy you are, especially at the start of school. So just very happy that you are joining us today. Whether you're starting a new program or searching for content to build, build for your already created courses, today we're gonna share free tools and materials as well as products and curriculum that are offered by RealityWorks that can really help your pathway development. Here's a brief outline of what we'll be covering today. Schools across the country are starting new patient care technician programs. During this webinar, we will walk you through key concepts needed in these courses and show you how you can align tools and curriculum to help jumpstart your courses. We hope that the information that is shared will help save some time for you as you do your planning. Let's start with actually understanding the role of the patient care technician. Students often wonder what the differences are between different career paths within health science. So let's take a moment to break things down and compare patient care technician to nursing assistant and medical assistant. Please note that ultimately patient care technicians and patient care assistants are synonymous. I will be referring to them as patient care technicians during this presentation, but really I'm referring to both. In terms of certification, nursing assistance requirements vary from state to state. So if your students become certified in your state, if they move, they may need to recertify. Certification for both medical assistants and patient care technicians are recognized nationally. In terms of responsibilities while on the job, nursing assistants are primarily clinical in nature assisting with activities of daily living and patient movement and transfers. These are common examples of nursing assistant duties. Medical assistants and patient care technicians both build on that foundation of the nursing assistant and add some additional responsibilities. Patient care technicians often include phlebotomy procedures and EKG. Medical assistants likely have those same advanced skills along with collecting vital signs, some types of medication administration, as well as having an administrative component to their job, including checking patients in and out and answering phones. Simply put, nursing assistant is the most entry-level position. Patient care technician falls in the middle and medical assistants have the highest level of responsibility of the three positions. The salary levels reflect this as well. The hourly wages and expected industry growth listed here are from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The job classification of patient care technician is relatively new, which might be why there isn't current data about expected job growth for this particular role. But if the leveling of responsibilities with the amount of schooling and wages is consistent, we could expect the outlook for patient care technicians to be very strong. The data here is general though, and may vary slightly from state to state. We're gonna talk about the resources available to you at every stage in your planning process. We will begin with the broadest level of resources, resources that are good for any pathway program development. Later on, we will get more and more specific and talk about health science programs and the resources available at that level. And after that, we'll talk about the recess resources available that are specific to the patient care technician. Here are the six key elements for developing career pathways. These elements are important to consider for any pathway program you develop, including health science. We will talk about several of the six of these, but not all. Funding and measuring system change will not be topics we covered today because we could easily spend 45 minutes on each topic. This graphic is pulled from a 142 page document devoted to the details about developing pathways. So if you'd like information about topics that we won't be covering today, I would recommend this for a little light reading. The link is at the bottom of the slide. 
We will touch on a couple of the others, but really we'll be spending the majority of the time on the topic of designing education and training programs. This is the curricular piece and is likely the piece that you have all been tasked to figure out. So first is to build an advisory council. Involving local healthcare industry leaders and clinical professionals in your pathway development is critical. How can you understand what local employers are looking for in a healthcare professional if you don't ask? Consider putting together a healthcare advisory council. Choose these from a variety of settings and level, levels of responsibility to get a variety of viewpoints and input. Meet on a regular basis, perhaps quarterly. Have a frank dialogue and ask, what are you looking for in your employees? Does your course content align with what they're looking for in the patient care technicians they hire? To lighten the load, think about combining your advisory council with other health science specialties to get the most information in the most efficient manner possible. Use your advisory council members to form partnerships. Are they willing to allow students at their location for field or job experience or job shadowing? Also, are they interested in coming in to be a guest speaker in your classes? Engaging employers is one of those six key elements for developing career pathways as seen in the previous slide. Next is to seek industry recognized certifications. Many districts Many districts actually require that any career pathway created needs to lead to some industry recognized certification or credential. In order to find the right certifications or credentials for your program, ask the right questions. Does your state department recommend a specific certification or testing agency? Are your instructors licensed if they need to be? What are your local employers looking for? Is employment transferable? What is the cost associated with certification? If you're developing a new program, make sure you research and find out what to do so your students get certified properly. You can also ask yourself if, if, there, if there are any other certifications that students can achieve as a, as a part of the program that they're in. For example, can they also be certified in CPR? This again is one of the six key elements for developing career pathways. Certifications and credentials are part of the step for aligning policies and programs. Okay, so we've talked about some considerations for building any pathway program. So now let's narrow our focus a bit um, to starting any health science path. So let's begin with careertech.org. This site houses a plethora of resources for any and all career pathways, but we're going to navigate to the health science portion of the site and then locate the career clusters frame. So we can get an understanding of which health science careers fall into which pathway. So I know this slide is kind of hard to read, um, but that very left-hand column is labeled therapeutic services. And you'll actually notice that patient care technician is not specifically listed here anywhere. But within that column, you will see similar roles, certified nursing assistant, medical assistant, licensed practical nursing, and registered nursing. So we can safely assume that the role of the patient care technician, if it were listed, would be in the therapeutic services column. So this is where we'll focus our energy. So now we've identified which pathway, the therapeutic services pathway um, that we wanna focus on so we can dig more deeply on this website. Under the therapeutic services portion, we can see two options, knowledge and skills statement and plan of study. Let's talk about both. Your first option under the therapeutic service pathway is the knowledge and skills statements. Clicking on this link will lead you to a 21 page document that outlines both general and specific learning objectives for the last three sections listed here. The green essential knowledge and skills section, the red cluster knowledge and skills section, and the blue pathway knowledge and skills section. 
This is a really great resource if writing learning objectives is not your forte. Even if you don't use them word for word, they can provide an awesome starting point. The breadth of information here also gives you peace of mind that you're not omitting any really important pieces when you're creating your pathway program. Here's one example of a knowledge and skills statement specific to the therapeutic services career pathway, which is where the patient care technician program fits. You can see that it focuses on effective communication. You will notice the specific expected student learning outcomes included here. So again, if writing these type, types of outcomes is a struggle for you, you have ready-made items already created. If you do write your own, again, you can use these items to check your program to see if you have any gaps in how you are assessing your students. Your section, second option in the therapeutic service portion of this website is the plan of study. This document provides an example of how you might lay out a full program of study, including both secondary and post-secondary courses. Having a master document like this is vital to ensuring that all required components are covered in your program of study, and it helps keep the objectives of each course well-defined. It's a one-stop shop to help you visualize the entire program. Okay, so we talked about careertech.org as being a great resource for all pathway programs and sourced some specific health science information from there. Now here's another resource that's specific to health science. The National Consortium for Health Science Education is a great resource that as its name suggests, specifically focuses on health science pathways. The National Health Science Standards that are available on this website provide a clear and consistent understanding of industry and post-secondary expectations for health science teachers and students. These standards are designed to provide the essential knowledge common across health professions to prepare and increase the number of students that are college and career ready. They are free to the public and are available via the link on the screen. The National Consortium for Health Science Education gives you a clean topical outline organized into 15 foundations. Academic foundation includes all your anatomy and physiology, pathophysiology, and medical math. Communication skills actually includes medical terminology. Systems includes understanding levels of care, governmental organizations, research organizations, and nonprofits. Employee, employability skills includes basic soft skills helpful to health science students. Legal issues, including HIPAA, scope of practice and such. Next are ethical components, including cultural considerations. Safety practices includes infection control, environmental and personal safety issues. Teamwork includes topics specific to healthcare teams as well as handling conflict. Health maintenance practices includes self-care, behavior health, and mental health. Next is technical skills, including vital signs and CPR. And last but not least is IT and healthcare, dealing with electronic medical records and current topics like wearable devices and apps. And again, you're certainly not obligated to follow their outline, but if you are beginning your curriculum writing from scratch, it can be a great tool to check against to make sure you aren't forgetting any vital topics in your courses. The National Consortium for Health Science Education also provides a curriculum crosswalk document, which can be extremely helpful in planning your courses. It takes their foundation standards and allows you to map where in your own curriculum you are covering those topics. These exercises provide transparency and accountability for the topics included and can help keep everyone on the same page regarding what is happening when during the curriculum. This particular crosswalk is more detailed and more granular than the previous plan of study 
document that we presented. Okay, so now we're getting to the most specific level of resources, those that actually pertain to patient care technician pathway programs. So here are six examples of organizations that provide certification testing services. There are differences in content services provided and associated costs for testing and certification between these organizations. So I highly recommend that you do some digging to find out which matches with any requirements your state or district might have. And I'm sure there are more out there. <laughs> When you visit an organization's website, they will all have examples like this one from the American Medical Technologists. And just to be transparent, RealityWorks has no affiliation with any of these organizations and we're not promoting any program in particular. But this is a good example of a summary of what is included in the AMT exam. But there is a more detailed outline of included content that actually follows this summary if you look at their website. And most of them include the percentage of the exam that's related to which content area. If you're in a district that is specifically feeding your students through the program to obtain certification, this information is gold. Once you've chosen the right program, you can use this information to inform what you cover in your courses. And you can actually glean your course pacing as well by understanding how important that content is when it comes to the certification exam. You can easily see that clinical procedures making up 33% of this particular exam would indicate that you need to spend about a third of your class time on clinical procedures. So this information can be very helpful when doing your course planning. There are other organizations that offer technical or skills assessments. The National Consortium for Health Science Education offers a health sciences assessment. Although this is not a right to work credential, the assessment has a lot of benefits. It adds some credibility of a national certification of achievement. It satisfies Perkins requirements for technical attainment. It validates student mastery of foundational healthcare knowledge and skills. And benefits for students include having a nationally recognized end-of-pathway certificate, a validation of the skills attained with the standards listed. It provides them a certificate for job interviews and resumes and recognition on college applications. And it provides them easier articulation into college programs. HOSA, the Health Occupation Student Organ Association, sponsors dozens of knowledge and skills competitions at the state and national level relating to a wide variety of health science topics. HOSA members are encouraged to take full advantage of the HOSA National Competitive Events Program as a way to increase the knowledge and skills as they prepare for future health occupations. Okay, RealityWorks, we offer a combination of resources and curriculum that can help you realize your ideal patient care technician pathway program. First, you should know that with all the products we create, we enlist subject matter experts to create curricula to go hand in hand with the hands-on learning tools. Our subject matter experts are exactly that, experts in their fields. They understand the roles and responsibilities of the, the job, as well as certifications in the field. We're so proud of the work that they do to help you teachers, the boots on the ground, in making your jobs easier. This is a package of products that we have put together that can jumpstart your patient care technician pathway program if you're starting from scratch. Here is where the students get hands-on learning of transferable career skills and foundational knowledge that they will use in patient care technician careers. These packages are completely customizable as well. Again, each product comes with curriculum that's already been created for you. This includes teacher presentation slides, 
pre and post assessments, as well as student activities that have already been designed by our lovely subject matter experts. Another free resource we offer is the Patient Care Technician Program Implementation Guide. Given the pathway package that's been designed, this guide can give you ideas and suggestions for how you might set up your classroom when teaching these types of courses. Additionally, for each of the included products, estimated teaching times and lesson, lesson topics are included. So once you see the breadth of content that is available, you, begin, you can begin to figure out how to plug it into the courses you have in your plan of study. Remember the earlier slide that had the list of courses in the template? If you already have some of these experiential resources, you can begin to review the curriculum topics included and see where they best fit into your pathway. But there's more. There are more free resources for your classroom available at the following links. First has posters available that you can hang up in your classroom. And the second gives you access to several units with free lessons for career exploration, all found on the RealityWorks website. And more. We have a blog. Did you know we had a blog? Please visit our blog. You can read about different topics there. Um, and clearly you know about webinars because you're here joining us today, but we have a wide, wide catalog of archived webinars that are available for free also on our website. We have free lesson plans and more. Um, you'll see at the bottom of the screen, um, all of our social media presence there, and you can learn even more about our products and industry happenings by following us on your favorite social media platform. And with that, um, we will open up the topic for question and answer. Um, I believe the best way to do this is in either your chat section or the, is there another place that they can go, uh, Emily, to um, put in some questions if they have them? Yeah, so at the bottom of your screen, you can type it in the chat as Molly mentioned, or you can use the Q&A feature and type your um, questions in there. Molly, we did get some questions regarding um, the links and information. Do you want to go over what everybody will be receiving after the webinar again? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you will get, first of all, you'll get a copy of this presentation. So anytime that there is a hyperlink located in the um, PowerPoint itself, you will get that access just by once you get that email from Emily within the next 24 hours, you'll be able to access the slideshow with all the websites on there, with all the hyperlinks on there, with um, everything that you need that I talked about um, within this um, webinar. Awesome. And then how can they go about getting a customized quote? Um, that is just a matter of um, connecting with the account manager that is uh, assigned to your region, and um, they are more than happy to figure out um, the goals of your program, what um, resources you might already have, and um, what gaps that you have uh, that you need to fill. So they're happy to work with you on um, creating that customizable package for you. And then somebody uh, asked a question, do you have a list of the equipment bundle that you showed and the price for it? Um, there is a list. Um, I can make sure that that's included in the um, email that Emily sends to you tomorrow. It's also um, located on our website. And for all that entire package of things, maybe I should go back and show it to you again. There are a ton of resources there. Those are that's the list of all of the um, items that are included in the pre-organized package here. Again, it can be customizable. And this um, sells for $29,999 for all of this plus the curriculum that comes with it. 
And I did just include that link to the website if anybody wants to check that out. And we will include it in the post webinar email as well. Thanks, and, Emily. Yes. And at this time, Molly, I am not seeing any additional questions coming in at this time. Great. Well, again, we just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to spend some time with us. We hope it um, you came away with some resources that'll be helpful for you as you start your patient care technician pathway programs. Thanks and have a great rest of your day.